come on, come on, come on. How you want it, call Yak or Patron? Brunch with the boys, we gon' get you what you want. And what you don't know, we about to put you on. Come on, come on, come on. How you want it, call Yak or Patron? Brunch with the boys, we gon' get you what you want. And what you don't know, we about to put you on. Yes, we are the trending topic. Free relationship profits. Brunch with the boys, we the highs. Brunch with the boys, we the highs. What's going on? It's your boy King Des here. Another episode of Brunch with the Boys. We're so happy to be here with you tonight. What's going on, fellas? Jeezy. What's good, everybody? It's Mr. Jen out here, and everyone got choices. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about some choices. 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 Yeah, we choices, do got choices, choices out here. Choices, choices, like my choices. choice to make the appropriate entrance right now. Yeah, I mean, you did your best. So. Okay. I mean, let's be honest. Point. After so many episodes, if you haven't nailed it down yet, the chances of you actually ever nailing it down is, is slim to none. So what I would say in response is be yourself. Yeah. And I'm sure our choices, listeners choices, agree. Choices, 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 I'm sure they agree. Choices. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. We got yeah. you. Yeah. And, and listen, that's what a bro does. And that's what we're talking about. The bro code. Oh, yeah. And specifically rules your man is never going to break. Or at least rules that he shouldn't break while he's in a relationship. Facts. So the first one I found to be interesting because, you know, we always say bros before hoes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hoes before bros. You know what I'm saying? If your man is in a relationship or he's falling in love, he wants to spend some quality time with his girl. Mm -hmm. You got to let that nigga be. And you can't call him pussy whipped. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Because you know that shit there. Oh, man, you just going, you pussy whip, nigga. You, we supposed to be kicking it. No, nigga, you, I don't want to kick it with no hard legs, nigga. I got a hole on the side. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is not breaking bro code to kick it with your girl. I, can Would I, you agree? Here's what I would say. So I, I don't think it's bro code to, to, to kick it with your girl. What I would say is you owe your friends or whoever your, your group is the same level of commitment, right? And what I would say is that you can't be breaking, you can't regularly be breaking plans with your, with your peoples for bitches that may not be around in your life six months later. Yeah. That's my thing. Like, if you talking about your main chick, like you, you, we know that's your relationship that's different. But if you dating a chick, or what if you falling in love? You're dating, but you're falling, and you then don't make plans with people. Yeah, that's my only thing. Like, it's not about to spend the time. Like, you, you a soft nigga. If you like, man, I ain't seen my friend in two weeks. When he always with his girlfriend. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, hey, man, I ain't seen you in a while. Let's get up Friday. And Friday it is, and Friday come. You like, man, you know Vanessa, man. She talking about she want to go get some cupcakes and shit. Nigga. Say so she I'm gonna get some cupcakes dick too. Like, nigga, but my, and my thing about that is. It's inconsiderate, right? It's not the time, right? But if you if you make and that's just anybody, right? We but we talking about bros, right? If you make yeah. the plans and motherfuckers arrange their life in anticipation of the plan on Friday yeah. and then you change the plan last minute, I don't think that's cool. But but other than that, man, I I, I don't have no problem with nobody spending time with a girl. I will say that most brothers are gonna be cool if you let's say you having the conversation I'm about to leave. Hey man, I got a dip, I gotta cancel on you, man. I'm about to get some cut. Usually a man will just understand at a fundamental level, like, dang, boy, I'm living vicariously through you. Go ahead, high five virtually and all that stuff. You're going to feel that. I think, but if a bro got burnt, for example, like there's this one time, right, that I was I was at the pool hall, got called by my bro, right? My bro called me. He's like, man, I want to spend some time with you. And I said, all right, bro. I hope he ain't said it like that, but no. go ahead. He was like, man, let's go out and go go kick it. Let's yeah. go play some pool, right? Hey, that that sounds right. No, he, and, and you know what? Yeah, you I was, probably I, should have known what he's calling you for, though. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't okay. because, you know, sometimes you believe niggas at, at face value, right? Yeah. yeah. Sounds so, like a personal issue. Mm -hmm. I get to the pool hall. <laughs> I know this story. Now. I get to the pool hall, right? And uh, he's like, man, what kind of drink do you want? I was like, man, Corona, bro. Let's, let's turn up, man. Yeah. I'm going to go grab the a table. The night is beginning. And as soon as the Corona shows up. He pays for it and says, all right, man. I was like, what you mean, all right, then? He's like, man, I'm about to go. I was like, about to go where? Oh, man. And he was like, man, I got I got a situation, man. I'm about to give me a little cutty. And I was like, dang, bro. Like, yeah, well, niggas ain't shit, bro. Dog, he left me at the bar, dog, and I felt like a hoe. You know at least saying? he bought that's you a crazy. drink, so you weren't you didn't feel like a nah, hoe. He bought nah, you a that's drink. That's what niggas do with hoes. They buy them. Yeah, drinks you're precisely right. You were a hoe that night. <laughs> yeah, I felt horrible, it's funny right? though because that's a bro code flaking on your bro, and it says you should never flake on your bro for another bro. That's all bad. But if you flake on your bro to kick it with a hoe, 
then it's all. I love the poetry. In yeah, well, I'm a poet. It yeah. depends on who you ask. But that's kind of my point, though. If I call you and be like, man, do you know we supposed to kick it tonight? Dogs, such and such, call me, man. I got some some cut, some action set up, something. You're supposed to let your bro off the hook when he's canceling on you for a chick. Every time, though? But what happens if he's really active and he got good game? Like, I mean, that could potentially turn into well, you know, there's, hell. Obviously, you have to consider things and, and be reasonable. If he's constantly canceling on you, that nigga ain't your bro. Yeah. But if, you know, if it's even consistent, you know, depending on how often y'all spend time together, you really should understand anyway. And then you got to also know what the situation is. Maybe you're in a relationship. Maybe he's mm-hmm. not. Yeah. So, you yeah. know what I mean? It's easy for you to say, kick it with your homie and you got your live in pussy at yeah. the house. You Real know talk. what I'm saying? So, Real talk. Yeah. I think, um, you know, it's crazy. I think you can do both though. I think, I think, cause I think we are, we're talking like, I got free time and I only get to spend my free time with this person, this person. I think you can do both. I think you say, look, and it may, and it may be, look, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to know this young lady. And so, I want to make sure I'm spending enough time with her to get to know who she is and what she likes and the things that make her tick. But you already know that with your homie, right? You yeah. already know. You've been your homie for a while. So mm-hmm. it may, as opposed to y'all chilling for half the day, it may be like, hey, man, let's grab, a, let's grab some wings and some shit for yeah. an hour and a half. And then you parlay that shit into something you're going to do with your girl anyway. Yeah. So if you and your girl's going to catch a movie and get dinner, you meet up with your homeboy have a couple a drink. hours later, man, have a drink. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe share a small appetizer, some shit, and just kick it. You know, hour and a half, and then you like, all right, man, be easy, homie. And then you go spend the rest of the four, five hours with your chick. You know what I mean? So you got to just be creative. I'm trying know? to sit here and look and think about this. This is not an issue for males in general, at least to my thought process. Like, you'll see more likely than not a woman who gets with a man and she gets fully absorbed, lose herself in that dude, and she will ghost everybody that she knew. Like, all the things that she once was doing, she's not doing. She was every Friday night. She was at the bar and with her girlfriends, and all that's disappeared. Like they can't catch nail salon appointments, none. Like they're not getting on that level. But for males, I just don't see this happening as often. And oh man, women. I definitely think it can happen. I think again, and I don't want to say because this sounds probably like a bad generalization, but I always feel like men compartmentalize a bit better than women. Uh, when it comes to our relationships, you know, it's probably why men can have six holes, you know what I'm saying, and still maintain home. But uh, if you, you have to make time for what's important, if this is your friendship that's important to you, you're not even going to have to try. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I fuck with you, niggas. I don't have to try and think to kick it with y'all. You yeah. know what I mean? We do it when we do it. If if dad's got plans, you know what I'm saying, with his situation, you got one with yours, like, nigga, we kick it next time. Yeah, like, so your real bro Nobody is not even going to trip on that. Correct. All right, so the next one I found to be interesting, of course, never knowingly fuck another man's woman. And if you unknowingly do so, give him the opportunity to find out and let him decide whether or not to ignore it. I got a question. I got a question for Jen. So let me ask you a question, Jen. Let's say, hypothetically, we went to college with a guy, mm-hmm. right? And we're, we're both we're both really good friends with the guy. And the guy is in a relationship. So during college, both Jet and I have spent time with this young lady. Damn, both of y'all fucked. But the all? different the difference is is I didn't. I just played basketball with her, you know, because I was a good guy. And uh sounds like cold for something, but and okay. maybe and maybe did more, right? No, no, Jet did do more. Yeah. And so all of a sudden. This individual, years after college, is about to marry this girl. Did y'all tell her? Listen, no, no, no. No one gets to talk. Let me finish. Okay? So I go to Jen. And I say, hey, Jen, man. I'm like, you should probably let the brother know. I mean, good, good, good friend of ours. I could yeah. call him right now. A uh, good friend of ours. I said, we should probably let him know. Just so he has all of the information before he makes this decision. Right? Yeah. Jen, like, man, it wasn't that, man. She got down um, seven years ago. We don't need to know. I said, I would tell. Right? It wasn't now to Jen's credit at this time that our our homie didn't even know this girl wasn't had no relationship there was nothing between One them so day. Jen actually was, yeah. Jen actually was friends beforehand remember this is hypothetical I'm using Jen because I'm putting him in a weird you, situation you, yeah you love to put me <laughs> but long story short never told the guy and was prepared or would be prepared to let this individual marry this wow. other person that's their hypothetically. Wrong. Obviously, hypothetically, man. No, I if think this that's in, wrong. If Jen, in your story right now, mm-hmm. I'm just kind of wanting to take his angle and his yeah, plans. Yeah, 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 we get it. Guys, just... let, me, let me preface this because I, I made that real confusing. It's a dude Jen knows. I put Jen's name there to make him uncomfortable, but it's not Jen. Just so I guys get more context, 
in regards but Jen knows to, the story. In regards to this gentleman, <laughs> this gentleman may have had some intimacy with this girl, right? However, he didn't go all the way. So you niggas being real discreet. No, I'm just saying he didn't go all the way. So essentially, what does that mean? All the way he means never that he only up. stick the tip in, and she was like, "I'm trying to save this for marriage, marriage and I'm not quite sure if I want to take it further than this." So the and tip got in, and the, the tip was pulled out, and then it was pulled out. Yes. So that counts as sex. I so agree. The tip was only put in. That counts and as sex. That's where the magic. That's where. The, that's where the milk comes from. It is, and, yeah, and it's the most sensation. So, so you're telling me one stroke is full sex? Yeah. One time, it's I, fine I, me. One I, whole time, it's fine. In college, <laughs> I had a situation with a neighbor, and uh, if you're listening, girl, you remember. <laughs> and uh, we went over there. She was a real church girl. Parents were pastors. Oh, and you already know. so I already knew the action was guaranteed when she said mm-hmm. that. And we went over there, and she was, you know, trying to fight it, trying to fight it. But we eventually ended up, you know, fucking dick in the pussy, raw too. I'll probably risk my life unnecessarily, but she was, you know, a good girl, quote unquote. So. I'm probably 12 strokes in, and she was like, no, I can't do this. Let's just get a condom at least. I should have known she was lying, but, you know, no means, no means no to me. Yeah. So You hear that, Jet? Yeah. No, so I stopped. I think he's talking about you. <laughs> so I stopped, and uh, she, she was like, no, nah, I can't do this. 12 strokes So 12 sex. strokes, I definitely had full sex. Really? I, I am willing to bet anything she doesn't count me on her, her count today. Oh, no, she doesn't. She women doesn't. are the worst. They body yeah. count, nigga, you damn near got to impregnate them for you to count, nigga. <laughs> he ain't even come, so like, that wasn't, that wasn't even. <laughs> but he fucked me for two hours, though. I don't know why, he, but that's my point, though. So I believe in that situation, bro code was upheld in a way. No, it wasn't. Because, in all honesty, should that person have destroyed their entire relationship for a did they get married? Stroke? Did they get married? They were about to, so they never got married. No, thank Bro God. Bro Code was not uh, ruined only because he never married. So they there were was no they infraction. Were, they were engaged. Yeah, they were only engaged. Which, I, to, to me, if I got a good friend of mine who's getting engaged to somebody I had any type of relationship with, I'm letting them know off rip. Was you? What was they? Were they ever going to tell them? And see, that's my problem. No. The cop out is that they didn't get married, but the reality I, is you were never going to say it. Correct. You know what I mean? So that's fucking up bro code. And I've been in this situation. Let me ask you a question, though. In those situations, when that person is blissfully in love. You got to keep it real with them, dog. You got to keep. What would you want? If your best, one of your good homies fucked no, your girl and you're about to marry no, he her. he just saw the cootie, basically? No, Listen, no, he put, the, he tip put the tip in. And you'll never be able to get that out. You'll never, that that he, doesn't go he away. Know, he know what your girl Pum Pum look like. It just, and feel like. Then I just can't fuck with him no more. That means he, so I you would race him. Wow. Wow. A friendship. So an extra violation of friendship. Code. You know I'm just fucking with no, you. No, we not. don't know. You, you know I would so never that's do my that. Question, All my though. bros still are my bros. My still question today. still we asked remains. We your question. Though. The answer you gave us was you wouldn't. My fuck with question still remains: Would you still fuck with her? Would you not want to know? Yeah, I want to know. So listen to me. So you did opposite, or this person did opposite of what you Let know. Let me put on the back end of this. So just to show you the other side of this, same situation in college. I'm I'm dating a young lady. Um, and a good friend of mine. I'm dating her for probably two or three months. I'm at a house. She's cooking. Like. I'm like, man, this might be my girl for college, yeah. right? Like, I wasn't going to be married. I was young. You know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, ladies. But we know you have an expiration date. We don't. We know it. You don't know it, but it exists. <laughs> but I was like, you know, this will keep it. This will, this will keep food in my belly yeah. in college. Yeah. So dang. um, that's fucked up. Hey, Solid hoe. It's it. real though. Need that. It's real, and she could throw down too. You know her. Yeah. Jet know her. Yeah. yeah. I already know. <sighs> man. Okay. Wow. So everything was this. everything everything was going well, and all of a sudden, one of my really good friends, who Jet knows as well, as a matter of fact. Jeezy knows yeah. him as well. He lives out west now, up in northwest. Comes to me and he says, um, hey, my God, you know something. And, and this individual, this young lady and my homeboy were a year ahead of me in college. Yeah. So they was in college together as freshmen when I was in high school. So he came up to me. He's like, hey, man, I just want to let you know something real quick. He said, um, "He said, yeah, I, I, you know, your girl, I, I fucked her. Yeah, that's a good friend. Yeah, real, real, real straight. That's like, that, what you mean? He said, check it out, bro. He said, you wasn't even here. You was in high school. Yeah. This was freshman year. By this time, I'm a sophomore. Yeah. So you're talking two, three years earlier. He didn't know me. Yeah. And uh, he said, but I just wanted to let you know that because I seen, I wasn't going to say nothing because I thought you was just smashing. Yeah. He said, but I seen you getting serious. Yeah. And he said, yo, she a, she a good girl. He said, but um, I just want you to know that, um, that this was the deal so that you f- are fully informed. Yeah. And so I, w- I appreciate that because within the next day or two, I dumped her. Of course you did. You know, I had to. Because niggas don't share pussy. I had to. So let me ask you a question. If you were two Not years in to your relationship and let's say 
you weren't in college at that time, so you weren't having that face to face interaction. You know, we all got homeboys that we don't see every day. Oh, it mm-hmm. might be once a year, twice a year, three times a year. Mm-hmm. He comes and checks you out and finds out you with her, mm-hmm. and he smashed several years, several like, eight, what, like what? a he decade. He's treating this girl as what more wife material now. You know, he's living completely like living. At this point. So, so would you end the relationship? Would you end the relationship so, with that? So, two things. I don't think that's a good analogy. I'm gonna tell you why. Example. I'm, 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 I'm gonna answer, it, but I'm gonna tell you why because he really my homeboy. He know way before two years I've been in a relationship with him. So to I me agree. that changes the scenario. So I, I I don't I can't tell you anybody that's my homeboy homeboy. Yeah. I, they I, know who, I think we have friends sometimes we that friends, we yeah. lose a little. No, they contact. got my friends like that then. And, and, Do you and care as much? I then? think that they're your friends. Um, and, and maybe we can. No, that's a different no, argument. No, let, me, geez, let me finish this real Go quick ahead. though. But I was going to say is it matters if this is a friend of mine that I know is going to be an integral part of my life. Even in my later years, right? Yeah. Like we, we, like Jet and Jeezy knows we gotta we we travel internationally. This COVID shit didn't fuck stuff up, but we travel internationally probably once every twelve to twenty months, right? We go somewhere, and there's a core group of like six to eight guys that we always travel with, and we've done that for over a decade now. Those guys are the ones who I would be like, man, I don't know if I can do this because yeah. then the motherfuckers that's gonna be in my wedding, mm-hmm. then the motherfuckers that's gonna hold my babies when we come around, and you can't know <laughs> what my girl with JJ look like. If I'd be fucking cool. with you too, be like, but this, this I know you would. Your son look I, like me, though. <laughs> I know you would. I know you would. And let me say something. And just right, we got friends and we don't talk to a lot. And I'm not talking about a nigga I ain't talked to in yeah. three years. Yeah. Right? If I ain't talked to you in two years, you're not really my homie. Yeah, we, cool. we cool. We cool. cool. But yeah, yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. I've been in a situation myself where a homie that was a close friend previously, years had gone by, distance in life had you know separated us, but because we had such a solid friendship early, to me. Regardless of that time, I thought that we still had to uphold that bro code. No expiration date on that? No expiration date on that, in my opinion. I think you have childhood friends that that bond was real. And you know what I mean? Even if you don't talk to them in a year or two, y'all should be cool enough to not fuck your girl knowingly. So to me, it's a lot of pussy out here. Including ex-girls? Yeah, including ex-girls. Because if in my situation, it was different. And it was a whole that... I was with and was in love with and wanted to marry, and everyone knew it. Way before the time that he smashed her, though. Way before the time that he smashed her. Okay. So you was over her by then. I was over there, but over her. But by the time we broke up, even if we break up, still you pursuing that pussy. No, that says cold, to me, bro. nigga, you was waiting on that. You know what I'm saying? Your opportunity years ago. It wasn't a buck up situation. It was more of a sought out situation. Can I ask you a question? Does it matter? So two things can be true. You can have feelings for a girl. And you really, really enjoy her, and she could be, she could be a whore, yeah. right? And so my question is, if she is a whore, right? Because there are good dudes out there that love whores, genuinely, yeah. right? So if she is a whore. Does that have an impact? The fact that you know she fast, she was fast before you met her. She was fast when she was with you, and she was fast afterwards. Well, I didn't know she was fast until I was already in it. But yeah, I had known towards the end of the relationship of who she really was. So what he did never surprised me, and I put it more on her. Mm -hmm. But I also think the bro is always ultimately responsible because we know everything. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just no need for us to be in that same situation. Fellas, there's way too much pussy out here. There's way too much uh, fishes in the sea. You got to really take into consideration that, man, you could walk out your door, man. And to be honest with you, you will find someone that day without even trying too, too hard. Go to Publix. It's a lot of hoes in Publix. I mean, Walmart, too. As they, long as you way can, do you want, Walmart. but you want upscale hoes, go to Publix. Depends on what you want. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you want Or, or Target, right. right. if you want some. The yeah, toes. yeah, yeah. I don't fuck with a hoe that go to Target. Toes. She's she's too a, bitch, a bitch that paid three, four dollars more for something she can get four dollars <laughs> cheaper at Walmart, that's not my type of chick. Personally. It's a bitch I, I'm looking for. I know. <laughs> Waste your money, nigga, by all means. Um, the next one I found was interesting. <laughs> don't drink up your bro's liquor supply without asking. And I like to throw in weed as well. Um, don't come over there smoking a nigga weed up and drinking all my drinks and not putting in or offering. You know what I mean? Is that is that a bro code violation? I don't know. Here's my opinion. I don't know if that's a For bro you. code violation because there's niggas who are naturally accommodating and that's their and shit. You're just, and like, you, you are. And that is With all due respect. Right. In, the good, in, the best, in the best way possible. Nick, yeah, you are. If, if, with, if, it was Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, nigga. I'm Jeffrey. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm out in there just, you know, handling my business in that capacity because I get joy from seeing everyone else Have a good time. having a good time. Facts, so facts, facts. For me, it's not a big issue. 
But there are some stingy ass motherfuckers out there, yeah. and that becomes a, an I, issue. I'll tell you, like, not with my close friends. Like, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not as hospitable as Jen as yeah. Jen is. But it's I'm not aware of this. It, but but it's <laughs> but I'm not selfish. So like, my close friends, if I got like, if y'all come over to my house and y'all like, hey. I'm about to light. I see you got a, you got a couple J. I'm about to light this bitch up. I'm like, man, go ahead, spark it up. Yeah. No, you can't smoke it all by yourself. Yeah. Right? But, but, but yeah, so like, like, yeah, light up, bring it over here. Or like, whatever I look, I yeah. got because my thing is with my homeboys. If you ask me for a hundred, if you say, man, I need to buy a hundred, I give you a hundred. But you can't, you can't drink my twenty dollar bottle of liquor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's real. So I, I wouldn't do that. But, but Jen is right. There's a lot of, lot of selfish bros out there. You know what I mean? For the entirety of my smoking life, you know, when yeah. I started in college, people have depended on me. <laughs> To get high off of me, and I, and I used to visit you in Gainesville, and oh, all man. your bros would fucking rush my rental. Everybody car. was excited when Jesus like, was coming. Yeah, man, LJ comes, don't he bring the weed? Like they would rush my car. I could never even make it inside. Though they'd all jump in and want to hit it. And then you have a you have a smoking bait, right? So, and never once did I get fifty cents from one of them niggas. So to we, be fair, we were all broke though, and all these niggas broke. now make six figures. All you niggas owe me wherever y'all at. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I you cash out? No, I do actually. But That's I'm actually hilarious. the same way though. You know, when it came to weed, people used to always say, "Man, don't go to LJ House because he's gonna spark one up the moment you get there." You know what I'm saying? I, I've had someone that I know get really annoyed, and you can see visibly that they're getting angry and having an attitude problem because a dude was drinking up his good liquor, like he was drinking up the Remy, and the nigga gave him a rum bottle. And he was like, man, pull up, man. And the nigga said, man, I see you got that Remy there, man. And he went and grabbed it and poured it out and, had, got and, had, and had about three cups of it. Dude was like, seriously? That, to me, that's yeah. a broke nigga. Yeah, you know, that's man. broke nigga shit. Yeah, like, man. I can see. I can't. I can't. I don't get it at all. That being said, you're low on Hennessy. Restart. Hey, <laughs> gent, like, <just> tighten up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um. Yeah, apparently that's the bro code violation. I don't think we agree with that here. I think when you have good friends and your money ain't funny, why wouldn't you share what yeah. you have? You know, yeah. so Absolutely. that's a fact. That's a fact. Um, your, Absolutely. Your bro sisters, exes, aunts, and mothers are off limits. Period. You cannot fuck any. Okay, of them. say that one more time. Slow. Your bro sisters. Uh, uh-huh. He want to do a whole check. His list. exes, his aunts, and his mothers. Okay, so I, I can I ask a question? You can't hit any of them. It's okay, so listen though. Listen. I get the exes. You get, I get the, the mothers. I get the sisters and the mothers. The aunties though. <laughs> the aunties. I was actually they, they say, the thickest anyway. I was gonna actually say I get the exes, the aunties, and the mothers, but I fuck a sister up. See, nigga. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. When y'all hit one of my aunties, dog, I don't really have no problem. Yeah. But if it, someone hits your sister but you don't have one. No, nah, somebody hit my sister, I'm like, dog, we fight. Yeah. Yeah. No, we fight. I might still want to be cool with y'all afterwards, yeah. but I gotta fight you. I don't trust, necessarily, I don't trust though, none of them niggas around my sister. You I know why? You. Though? I y'all got a sister. Y'all gonna? No. I gotta smack y'all. I'm y'all saying, cool? First off, I don't, I don't want, want you to survive that that <laughs> that, 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 that slaughter. But <laughs> I don't want you to. But goddamn, my sister had to want to fuck you. Like I can't dictate her life. So from that perspective, your sister wanted to fuck me, man. Like. Man, but you know the way. You know talk the talk to me first. That's you, all I'm asking. Listen, for. and I'm gonna say you know. Hey, the com- I'm about to hit your sister tomorrow. <laughs> I don't. That's a tough hey, phone call to the make. The conversations we have, y'all, y'all would be comfortable knowing I smashed. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. I, I would tell, you treat me different? No, I'd snitch on you before you even got to the pussy. I'd be like, listen, I tell everything. But you tell I'm a good person, though, too. Though. I'm a good dude. Listen, I, she knew that before, but the I'm story tell, I tell then is going to be Yeah, I agree. Say. I'm going to sell all your shortcomings. He don't yeah. get no head. Nothing. <laughs> like, he don't got no curve. Isn't that true? Isn't you ever true, seen a nigga with just a straight boy? You know what I'm saying? He don't got nothing in it. You ain't going to get satisfied off it. Leave it alone. <laughs> no, that's not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not true. Why you going to lie to him? Don't get this big boy. I think that's really up to you again. Man, everyone, aunties on the door, aunties exes, get it though. But sisters, man, I your sister grown, man. So Aunt, I, other, no, but aunties, let's just let that one ride. Your auntie will probably slide on your bro before your bro slide on your auntie. Undoubtedly, a, a single auntie and yes. I'm just trying to is aggressive. Out, why yes. are all the aunties that are single thick? I have no idea. Come on, and aggressive and pussy good and they crazy, and that's why they single, nigga. <laughs> Shit, all of all of the above. You know what I mean? Oh shit! Sure, I always find it funny, and we'll move on from this. When you it, you look at a woman's family, right, and check out the women, are all the aunts single? Are all the women in the family single? Because if so, 
this bitch don't know how to keep a man. No, and that shit is that it's shit contagious. is gonna trickle down that's in your gener- relationship. That's a generational curse. Because right? she's seen only that. So mm-hmm. everything I'm telling you, if you look at there's something to be said behind that. If the relationships, the women are all single in her family, mm-hmm. it has to be something. She don't got no good road models. It has to no. be something. And that's real shit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Anyways, we'll move on from Sex. that. And we've been through this situation, Dad's here, so I want to hear what you say. Step in and tell your bro if you see him making a, a woman uncomfortable. <laughs> tell me you've been. I know you've been in this situation, Dad. Well, I got a story on this one. And do you step in? You got a in? Super Bowl story, do you? No. I got you a, I got would you step in, though? Or what, is that something? If I see my, my, my bro making a girl uncomfortable? Yeah. I, mm. yeah. See, I was going to say absolutely, but I know, I, the gents, I know the story Jet going to tell. So listen, though. Let me, you let did me, it. <laughs> let me preface this. Let me, you know what? So <laughs> don't preface it. Let me just you, add listen, the story. Listen, you should. So all the all the brothers out there listening, you should step in and check your homeboy, check your bro, because women deserve to be respected. That's what we represent our brunch with the boys. We talk a lot of shit, but we would be respecting women. But that's it. Um, let's hear Jen's story because so, it's amazing. And by the way, when Jen's going to tell you the story, I'm going to tell you a follow up story with the same dude in another situation. We was at Super Bowl in Jacksonville. Yeah. So the one I'm going to tell you is about. I got a friend, right? So we're going good to, friend. Yeah, we're going to this party, right? And it's a it's a a party at the Westgate, right? And we're That's in this Westgate, and this person, you know, when he's on tequila, right? He get real crunk, right? So he's we done drank up all the tequila. Then we done drank up all of the brown one, brown tequila, and the blanco. You know what I'm saying? All the clear one. And so then I'm like, we smoked, we drank. I'm like real messed up. So I go out into the other room, man, trying to sprinkle water <laughs> on my face, try to get, trying to come back alive. Man, you sound a lot. You saying a lot, I man. I come back you inside. I come back inside, and this guy with his pants on, but and I think it's just slightly his, down. I know. I was just. I think it was just the boxes. In, in his boxes. I know who you're talking and about now. He starts to. <laughs> he's basically feeling on himself outside his clothes, masturbating. Right? I, I know who we're and talking in about front now. Of, in front of two ladies that they were at the party. Oh, because we had a little company. Too. Yeah. yeah. But listen, so listen. That. I'm going to say that. I was there I, that night. Listen, I, I was did at, not see that. Part. I was at the party too, and this is what I'm going to say. The ladies that was there. Well, one of them was was occupied and had to do, but another lady said, "Hey." Pull it out. You know, I mean, come on now. She was ain't shit either. I mean, she did. So I'm just saying, so, like, technically, when then, that, by shot, that said, the woman was not uncomfortable. I mean, literally, I don't think any woman is going to generally out the gate be comfortable with a man basically drive rubbing his but, but listen, but yeah, and, and I, I got drunk I, and drunk. I can't let you do the dude like that either because I was there. I mean, you was in the kitchen. <laughs> and um, he he wasn't like actively going after them, he was sitting in the chair, minding his business. And then they came he, up. He just liked the way he felt. <laughs> That's really what it is. Well, anyway, but, but I, I've been in a situation too where I've seen our, our homeboy, we all know as well. Is that the club? Yeah, and we was at the club. What's and we was at the strip club. Oh, okay. And this nigga starts picking chicks up. And it was at the regular club. And to be honest with yes, you, I everywhere. wish I could say this nigga name because this nigga is, makes women uncomfortable everywhere he goes. <laughs> but he would, we go to the club and he'll pick a hoe up like he fucking her in the air. The strip mm-hmm. club the same way. So his ways with women is constantly aggressive to where, you know, it would make me uncomfortable. And that's his know? dance move too. Yeah. That's not even like. Let me put this out there. So I don't know if you said Jeezy, but me and Jen. We had some friends in town. This is this is years ago. We went to this club for all my Orlando folks, Matrix and Metropolis. All right, if y'all remember Matrix and Metropolis, day, yeah, y'all man. really from Orlando. So so we went in there. Basically, there was a young lady who was dancing. He went up to her and was like, "Yo, I want to dance." The problem is she's dancing with another gentleman, right? Oh yeah. And so he goes up. And he's like, "Yeah, I want to I want to dance with your girl." And the dude was like, "Hey, that's not happening." As good friends, what we should have done. Is we should have said, hey man, our friend was a little intoxicated. We should have said, hey man, chill out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But we didn't. We minded our business because we were all tipsy as well. And we said this will be good entertainment. So long story short, yo, he starts dancing with the dude's girl. She's like, babe, it's okay. Like, don't worry about it. Dude steps to the side, angry, but but not committed to doing any yeah. taking any action. And we allowed that to happen. And the crazy thing is. Our homeboy was dead ass wrong for that. And yeah. we should have checked him. We were some young niggas too. Right now I check him. I'd be like, bro, no. So did we break the code in that capacity because we didn't check yes, him? Yes, we did. I'm telling and- you why. Because we put him in a situation where he was in the wrong and yeah. had some shit popped off. It would have been on him. Yeah. And we allowed him as able body and able minded people there. We could have pulled him off easily. And we didn't. And then what we did, in fact, was if the other nigga whose girl it was would have jumped, he would have got pummeled. Oh, yeah. You he know what I'm saying? Yeah, he would have got so, pummeled. And did nothing you know. wrong. And, and that brings me to the next violation. You have to prevent your bro from any physical 
altercations when possible. But if necessary, you have to have his back. This seems like a situation where you guys could have pulled him back, especially mm-hmm. your gorilla ass does, and said, no, nah, dog, we ain't doing that here. Mm-hmm. And instead, you let that nigga go. And yeah. due to that, you had to follow through and, you know what I'm saying, jump yeah. in too. So y'all both violated the That's bro a code. sensitive situation, man. No, y'all it's, violated the bro code. Come on. I'm not, I'm not saying in this situation. I'm not saying in this situation, but basically the code that you're talking about, like you want, you have to prevent him from. You know, himself. any acts of violence towards anybody. But in the event necessary. something pops off, you know. But this wasn't necessary. Y'all sorry for proving. Well, I think that, I think we're, I think we're, we're 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 conflating two things, right? Sure. There's a thing where you're being uh, you're being aggressive towards women, and if you have a responsibility, and it's the other thing if your boy just is fight happy, and we all got homeboys yeah. like that, either yeah. normally or get a little lick yeah. at them, and they start acting white boys, and they want to fight everything and everybody. And uh, my offense to the white boys. White boys out there. It's just a figure speech. We love all y'all. Yeah. But um, you want to start fighting everybody. And here's the thing, you know, I've been in situations where that's happened to me. You know what I'm saying? You get a little... And once again, I want to preface all this stuff. This is years and years ago because once you get mature, man, that fighting shit, it ain't, I'm not opposed to a fight, yeah. but I don't want to hurt my hand. I don't want to <laughs> catch no charge. Like, I got to go to work tomorrow. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to get no bullshit. It's not because I'm scared. It's just because I'm old. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Wise. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Wise. And so... I'm not trying to I'm not trying to do all that shit, but I do think though, the minute that your boy shows you or you see this is not no fight you're gonna pull him from, yeah, you just gotta make sure. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not even wanna jump into it. If it's him on another dude, they man to man gotta square up. My job there is to make sure don't nobody else jump, jump in. in. Exactly. I see an, if I see another, if I see another dude inching towards it. I'm you already cocking ready. my fist like, like, and I'm saying, I'm like, hey, man. So you're like, going to let a nigga clean your nigga up like that? No, right? if it's one-on-one. On one. No, I'm saying, let's say it's one-on-one, on one, but he evidently fights better. Like, you Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to let him get pummeled. Yeah, like, yeah. At, at, like, at a certain point, I'm, I'm breaking the shit up. Yeah. And if Buddy put his hands on me, then I'm going to drop him. So, so are you breaking it up or are you fighting to, to whoop him to set the shit straight? Oh, you mean if he pummel my if boy? If he beating your boy up, do you jump in to whoop his ass Ooh. or are we jumping in to bring it up? That's weird. That's a tough decision. I'm, I know what you're going to do, I'm Jack. Not, yeah. You're going to fight that nigga and whoop for his no ass. For no reason. Yeah. You're angry already. For no reason. You the type of nigga angry by life but, and you just wait for a reason to take it out. But we, but we talking about what somebody should do or what we would do. I, I think well, what we, we know what you should do and that's break what it should up. You do? Right, I mean, right? you know, technically that's the safest bet. But right. what well, I would you do? disagree with you, by the way, though. Just to pull well, on. I definitely agree because mm-hmm. everyone lives by different principles and, and, and di- a G code. To me, right. I think Jen has the appropriate response by G code. You got to whip that nigga ass right. and then talk shit about your boy later. That's right. something you two have. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. G code right there. Right, so right. You, you don't break it up and leave that nigga clean. He over there yeah, clean. Yeah. look like he he just got ready for the club what, and got here. No. What the, see, what I'm doing, what I'm probably doing is I'm probably breaking it up with violence. So, like, if my buddy getting washed, I'm coming through with a strong right. Agreed. Agreed. On the but next just thing. one. Buddy, just one. Your buddy laid out. I'm getting my homeboy up. And yeah. I'm like, hey. And you're walking away. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, this is done. And you know what? That's more than fair. Yeah. That's more yeah. than fair. Can After you throw that punch, that. wait a minute and look around. Because yeah. Yeah, you cause grab your homie too quick, I feel like. Very yeah. few niggas nowadays fight solo. That's so true. you always got to be true. cognizant of who in the crowd. I know that's the worst part. That is it. Or the nigga run into the car right quick. You got to be worried about him. If you see a nigga leave the room, I've been in every one of those situations. Unfortunately, I have been as well. (laughs) Unfortunately, I have been as well. You know what I'm saying? All right. So this one's fun. If you unknowingly, oh my gosh, we have been here. If you unknowingly blow your bro's cover, you must immediately alert him of the situation. So I think every man has been in a situation where he's told his girl, a and B, A, man, I'm just going to go have a drink with the boys, yada, yada, yada. And your girl maybe calls him and says, hey, man, we're such and such. Oh, man, he went he went to play golf with, uh, with, with at, at Top Golf down at downtown. Oh, I thought you said he was going, oh, no, he went to play golf after he had a drink. And then you got to tell, you got, what do you got to do? You got to call that nigga immediately, text that nigga the whole layout of the situation so all your stories align. Bro code, ladies, we will never break this shit. I don't give a fuck if we in love with you. You have our kids. You're the best thing in the world to us. We are not breaking that. We will not blow. You cannot blow your bro's cover, man. It's not yours to blow. Exactly. <laughs> it's just not yours exactly. to blow. It's not cool, man. Exactly. It's not cool. And to be honest with you, we have all gotten caught up in some situations as it relates to that. But I tell you, boy, the more seasoned you get, man, oh, there is, it is like fine dining by the time you get to a ripe age of... 35, man. You, you, the way you cover, nigga, you cover so... 
seamlessly, dog. You forgot that it was a cover, like a defensive like it, back, like in the NFL, nigga. Mm-hmm. Like, it turned into Move the truth. It, it turned into the truth at some point. Oh, you know what I'm saying? No, that's the thing. Once you say it, you believe it. <laughs> yeah, you got to. Two weeks later, be like, man, I went to drinks and Top Golf. Nigga, you didn't go to Top Golf, nigga. For real? You forgot for what real? it was like? No, oh, yeah, I, we did. You ever been telling a oh, story yeah. to your homeboy and realize and, and remember he was your cover and he correct you? Like, we ain't do that. You're like, we ain't, Dog, we ain't do that. Because if you don't sell yourself on the lie, nigga, it didn't really happen. You can't sell somebody else on the shit. And years ago, that's why I lied to your ass about mm-hmm. something. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't good. I was young because you were a yeah. shitty liar. Easy to gent. And that's in the, in, the, in the early days. Oh my gosh! And I knew if I told this nigga the truth, we go down. <laughs> but I lied to this nigga and, and encouraged him to be able to cover with my truth. And let and, me tell you, and, and I was when I got free. D, when I covered dog, I was furious at. I was like, "How dare you lie on my brother?" <laughs> he he had to believe it. I and, was like, "He would never do that." <laughs> I was, and no, he would I have never so sold it away. Dog, I was starting to get physically red, dog. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm dark skinned. You know what I'm saying? He, he definitely believed you, but I assure you, he would have not lied. I that found way. out about a whole like decade later. Yeah, I, I waited ten I years because like, that nigga still couldn't be trusted. Let me, let me ask you a question. Do you? And I don't know if this is something that we're going to discuss, Jeezy. Do you have a responsibility if your your bro is about to engage? In, and this is a general topic, general kind of kind of thing. But engage in something that you deem dangerous. Do you, you obviously have, what's your responsibility? Is your responsibility to say nothing because he's a grown ass man? Is your responsibility to tell him how you feel, but leave it at that? Or if he proceeds to do that, is your responsibility to, to tell his girl or his parents or somebody else, yeah. hey, this motherfucker That's about to do something? That's a great question. That's actually what we were going to get into next. Okay. And I didn't even another know that, way to, I mean, that's how we do it. <laughs> another way to look at it is if your bro cheat on his girl, wife, it says <laughs> you get to intervene only once. If he's sober enough, if he's sober enough to look you in the eye and tell you to fuck off, then you're clean. You tried you did and what whatever that do. nigga does. But if that nigga's too fucked up to do so, you it's your responsibility as a bro to get him out of that situation. Or yeah, have yeah. So I, I think it agree. speaks to what you say, whether it's cheating or killing a nigga, whatever fucking shit that your mm-hmm. your homie is in. Mm-hmm. If he is cognizant enough to say, hey nigga, leave me alone. This is what I want to do. You, that's all you can do. He's a grown man. But in okay, so if he tells you "fuck off, leave me alone," are you officially and legally by bro code? Yeah, you're you're safe. You you do not need to cover for him in that event because at the end of the day, you didn't agree with that what, shit in the first place. Well, I mean, if I'm you have asking. to cover for him, that seems to go into something. Else. What you can say is you can isolate yourself from the situation. Yeah. So you shouldn't feel bad about anything that happens or transpires based on, based on that. Any consequences that came with it, you're safe there. Now, if he asks you to cover some shit, right here, right? that again <laughs> comes to the reg- the first bro code. If your bro, so bro you, asks so you, you to, have cover, to cover him, even if he's what not- is a bro if he's not covered? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he, you got, listen, you listen got to me. cover. If you, here's the thing. It's almost like it's a, di- it's different, but it's almost like the fight thing. I'm a cover for you. And I'm going to talk shit about the bad decision you made yeah. that I told your motherfucking ass not to do in the to position you, you put me in. But I'm going to cover for your book, for your ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to cover for you. So I think in that situation, you got to cover for him. And you and you can even tell him, you can be like, yo, I'm going to cover for you this time. Yeah. Do not, not put, me, put in. me in this situation yeah. again. Real I've, been, I've be, been in that situation where I actually cheated and, you know, it shit went down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, only time I've ever been in that situation, um, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. What did Lil Duval say? Ninety eight percent of the time, you know, <laughs> hey, my number was right, so I got an A. But um, yeah. So my chick was mad that you, gent, you know, what I'm saying, and you, Des, didn't tell her, bro. And she really felt that it was your it was your responsibility to inform her, as if you niggas weren't my bro. She gonna have to take that. And dick. the irony of it was mm-hmm. is that she had a homegirl. Who was cheating on her husband? Didn't fucking say nigga. Shit. Didn't say shit to that nigga. So you don't owe that nigga any responsibility <laughs> because guess what? She's your friend. But you thought my friend should tell you my dirt? Um, so no, come keep, on, man. Keep it real. And this is with all That's due bullshit. respect to, to, to anybody's girl, even my bro's girl. The minute that they're done with you, I'll never talk to you again. Nah. So, I'm only fucking so, with you because you know my, my homie. That's it. So I don't owe you shit. Not a fucking like, thing. Just because I'm nice to you when you see me don't mean I owe you any allegiance. I'm and it don't it mean I like your ass either. Facts. But you know what I'm saying? That's another situation. Well, get it off your chest, fellas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. So don't mess with another man's wife or girl. It seems well, obvious. Hey, right? man, we ain't spending too much time on this. You do that. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You're We're no longer bros nigga. and we fighting. Yeah. Oh, that's and fucking that's real fight. Too, and like. So I'm leaving her ass because you just fucked my whole life up. Yeah. Our friendship's fucked up. I'm going to fight you 
and I'm leaving her. Everything's fucked up because you did that. You can't. That, that's, and a part of me, excuse me, a part of me wants to say he did you a favor in a way because any chick that's capable of fucking your friend, any wife that's capable of fucking your, your boy, she was never, you, you didn't want to be with that whole long term anyway. So in a way, as fucked up as what he did, he even showed you who he was. So you needed to get rid of both of those people in your life because just because they didn't, they were the ones that did it doesn't mean that this wasn't possible down the road, in my opinion. Listen, my thing is, let somebody else show me that. And my thing is, not because of her, it's yeah. because now I can't fuck with you no more. Yeah. And that, like, that part of the anger is the hurt that you're losing somebody close to you that you fuck with hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, now, I can't be with her ass, but, nigga, real talk... I probably wasn't going to be with her in five years anyway because yeah. she's been getting on my nerves lately. Right? Well, you don't know that. <laughs> I mean, that's right, right. But I'm case, saying you, you don't know, know that. that so. But I, what I do know is that I lost my homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and to reference my story from earlier, I was happy when I found out my boy fucked that girl because I had these uh, re- reminiscing moments where I was like, man, maybe she was the one. But if that had never came out, then I would have always wondered, did I miss out on something when the fact is he did me a favor. He showed me who she was. And it took maybe losing a friend and her to realize that. But again, sometimes that's the way life works out. Let me ask you a question. Could you could you ever like that that individual? Could you ever really fuck with him hard again? Like, really? Like, I I mean, have a girl. You really like let's say you get in a situation where you with a girl. Everything's great. Everything's groovy. You love her. You going down. You know, you go home, whatever. You see your homeboy. And you like, man, y'all drinking. Everybody's hanging out. You kind of doze off because you're smoking, drinking. Would I be nervous? I wouldn't be nervous because, first of all, I'm not really a jealous nigga and I'm not insecure in that mm-hmm, way. Mm-hmm. You know, if my whole fuck a hoe, another nigga, yeah. I mean, that's I'm, I'm it, a dog. fuck a cousin. I mean, that's just, <laughs> I'm the type of nigga that do that. And just to be clear, I fuck this hoe's cousin. I mean, I don't play games. You, you fuck me over, hoe, I fuck you over. But I, I think I would have been, I, I was happy he did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, don't, I would have never... I don't think I'd ever bring the love of my life around him, not because I'd be worried about him fucking her, but only because, you know, the friendship ain't really but what for me, it was. Was it impacted by that? Yeah, yeah, I think so, because what my issue was is that I didn't find out from him. So had I found out from him, he fucked the hoe and be like, hey, Jeezy, man, your hoe ain't shit. I'd be like, and, word, and I'd have been good. But because I had to find out from other people. You was going to go home and, sh- and that nigga was going to break bread with you and shake your yeah. hand and dap you up and not say shit. That's just it. For years, he had we had been in contact and we'd been cool Whenever I was in time and was kicking it, and the nigga had done fucked the hoe and never said anything. And he knew your feelings for her. He knew I was in love with her, and I. And if he knew me, he'd have known. He didn't have to hide it. He could. We could have laughed right. that shit over over a right. drink. You know what I'm saying? I, I would say what I would have did. I would have passed on the first time I knew it was available. I would have hit you up and been like, "Hey man, this bitch yeah. on huh, something." And if you if you like, man, you know what? That hoe, man, do what you got to do. Don't pass on it. That's what right. I'm saying. Call then me before then and then go back. hit that hoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he would have called me like, "Man, I think I can hit," I'd be like, "Nigga, fuck that hoe. Shit, let me know how it go. Mm-hmm. Videotape it, nigga, because yeah, oh I, yeah, I'd like to see that. You know what I mean? Sometimes, well, I bet, but sometimes <laughs> ass was fat though. But sometimes you just need those things to get over shit. But let's move on. Okay, so if your bro found wife material and is messing it up with another hoe, you have to remind him of what he has and where he was before he met her. That's a bro code responsibility to keep your bro in line with what he even wants. You know what I'm saying? Because you know niggas be fucking up. Hey, Jim, before you answer, let me, are there levels to bro, right? Because we're saying bro code as a general term, meaning you're a male friend. But I would I would say that there are levels to it, right? I got like I got like five six dudes who I'm like if if my life is going bad, like I'm like, hey man, like I'm depressed, like maybe I lost my job, something going on. I could call them up and be like, hey man, like I need some, like I need I need some some guidance, some help, something. I need you to help me out. And then I got like I got like eight other niggas that like are my friends, like I might hoot with them, we cool. Like if I'm like I'm going somewhere, hey, pick me up one, yeah. I pay you back. But I'm not calling niggas when my life is bad. Yeah. So do you think, do you, are there different requirements or responsibilities for those levels of bros? And my point is, what, I think that has an impact if there is. I think that has an impact on the questions. You know I what agree. I, mean? I agree. I think it depends, Jen. Wouldn't you agree? No, I just, because I think they're not going to have as many opportunities to have to even break the bro code because they're not going to be around you as much. So general that, frequency true that, true that. of... You That's being around your five people, man, you are gonna be around them yeah. often, right? That's when you are gonna do your dirt, and and those are the people that you're gonna, you're gonna be comfortable around. Not, and I'm not saying that all those five people live near you or whatever, because some of that interaction be, with them, yeah, your gotcha. general okay. interaction with, with them is gonna be different. Yeah, but um, That's a tough one though. Yeah, me. like to place that responsibility, 
for your relationship on your bro. You know what I mean? It is. It is tough. Save man. you from yourself, almost. It but is, don't you need friends like that, don't you? You know what? For me, it's not even you know saving them from themselves. There's a piece of it is just like you have a responsibility to just check them. You know, sometimes you'll you know you're going down the street and you're driving in these new cars, and if you're and it has that lane assist, and you go over into a lane and that junk will shake the wheel. <laughs> it's you know it's not going to drive you to safety, right? But it's going to alert you to say, man, check yourself real quick and because get right. and get back right. And don't stop doing things that make y'all happy together. Yeah. He said the second thing is, man, he said, you learn as you get older. He said, man, ain't nothing new out here in these streets. Nothing. He said, ain't nothing new. He said, everybody that's, that's, that's in the streets know it ain't shit out here. And they wish they had somebody at home who had their back and was loyal to them. I, I, I wouldn't agree with that statement because I think we've all had our moment in the sun, so to speak, where we lived our life and was doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. It was great. You know, I have no remorse. I can't look back and say, man, I was so empty and lonely while I was fucking those hoes. I wasn't. But I knew that a time came where it started to mean less. I, I remember sleeping with a hoe towards the end of college. And I was like, damn, nigga, this is the fifth hoe this week. Like, what is the purpose? You know what I'm saying? And I yeah. felt like I needed more. So I knew it was time to move on. So I think what Buddy said. I was talking about saying, the 20-something. I think yeah, you're talking about when you get, your you get older. Keep your dick shit. in your pants. You yeah, realize yeah. pussy is pussy. And if any nigga who's fucked a good amount of pussy, and, you know, I've had my fair share plus that times 10, carry the two. Whoa. And, dog, all pussy gets wet. That's why you, I laugh when I hope like, my pussy's so good. You know what I'm saying? Yada, 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 yada. yada. Bitch, a lot of pussy right. is good. Even I've never met a, a dry pussy right. per se in my life. Well, I've met one or two. Never. I have met one or have two. A girl ever told pussies. you, man, you know, I mean, my pussy is okay. I mean, never man, heard man. it. No one's going to say that. Every girl has the best vagina I might, ever. I might want that whole more if she said. She underselling, and I need to see why. But I will say that every man has experienced a dry pussy yeah. a, once or twice in their life. Yes. And just like every woman has experienced a micro penis once in their life. I don't believe every woman has experienced no, a micro penis. I have tested Not every woman, dog. I have tested They've had small, but micro. Micro, micro yeah, is because you know what it looks like for him. So whether or not yeah. you experience it is completely up to you. Yeah, micro is not. We not. I'm not going to agree with that. Boy, that's got to be tough. I've pulled a lot of women, like a lot. So I'm you just walk up to bitch and be like, hey, "Man, so like, no, it's not like that." I mean, but, small dicks, you know, but, you know, but you know, when I'm you, fucking with you. But you know, when you get in the general conversation, the sex comes up. I like to sprinkle in there. I was like, man, have any of y'all ever experienced a micro penis? Everyone's like, yeah. yeah. The, those those niggas really need the most support. <laughs> Because to be fair, you can have small titties and you can have a flat ass and a nigga gonna love the shit out of you. And your box probably fire, nigga. That pussy probably wet, wet. Big girl big girl pussy is way better than any other. And, and, and we that's, know that. I, it, it's baking at 350 degrees all day long. It is. It is. Between those thighs, <laughs> nigga, that shit is <laughs> that shit is fucking rotisserie <laughs> pussy, nigga, really. You know what I'm saying? So I agree with that. But there's so much to work with with that flat chested, flat assed hoe. That a micro penis nigga, what what can he do? That nigga got to get in the gym, and get swole. But you know what though? I'm I'm gonna I'm play devil's advocate Please. on this, only because what I would say is there's a girl out there that mm-hmm. dudes is not hitting on. She ain't got. She's like, man, my boobs small, my butt small, not all that, this, that, and the God other. Damn, she and dudes, too. dudes and dudes is not hitting on her. And that dude with the micro penis comes up to her. Maybe he regular looking, got a good yeah. job. He take her out. They have a good time together. She'll love him. She gonna deal with his ass. He'll find her. She'll never be like, listen, she don't. She ain't gonna love him how she would love him if he had everything he needed. Damn. But she's gonna. <laughs> but, listen, <laughs> but listen up. I was with you, bro. You said that. Now I feel sorry for that. Day. Will he ever find love? <laughs> like, 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 but, but the bottom line is there's somebody for, for everybody. everybody. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I so, agree. Little guys, and don't even stop if searching. it takes you 20 years to find And them. not even that. <laughs> Go to if, China. You'll find you one quick. If your somebody <laughs> is Sri Lanka. A, <laughs> if your somebody is a nigga with a micro penis, man, what did you do to God? You know what I'm God, saying? Hey. <laughs> you need to get your life right. All right. So if you can help your bro get pussy in any way, you have to do so according to the bro. Oh, hell yeah. Would you agree with that? If you can help your bro get, I guess it also laid. depends on status, like relationship status. Because if you married, and you, you shouldn't be encouraging another hole. Yeah, you shouldn't be him. encouraging that type of behavior. No, no, no. no. I'm not talking about. Do you have a, encouraging and presenting are two different things? <laughs> and we can look at it from different. Okay. Is this person in a relationship or is this person single? Then, because if he's single, oh, anything you do with that. About, so you, if you're talking about in a relationship. Yeah. Man, dog. That's but what if you know, what that's if you know his, you know his relationship is not one he wants to be in, yeah. and and a girl he in a relationship with ain't shit. And then yes, it's probably be very easy to 
And do you, you know, ever encourage? It. Do you ever encourage a, a friend of yours who's in a relationship to do it, or do you simply say, "Hey, if you're interested, there's an opportunity that that awaits. I think you first off, no one speaks like that. I think we present it. I think you present it. I think you present like, "Hey, man, this whole she's seeing you, she want to holler." What what his response next is what we do because yeah. sometimes it's true. Yeah. You leave it up to them. Most of the time, they might just be like, "But for real," and then you be like, Most, "You know, 100 percent of the time, they say, let me see a picture.'" Yeah, and no, that's after that. And that's once they that. see the picture, then they say, "No, nah, I'm straight." <laughs> be like, "No, nah, send them my number." So let's, you know what I mean? Let's keep it real. Or, or it's like, man, shit. If, yeah. If this was ten years ago, bro. I nah, hit niggas it. don't say that. Niggas say, "Let me see a picture," and they either say no or they say, "Give and me." And say yes right now. And, and if your bro is single. Nigga, you got to do whatever it takes, nigga. You got to give him your room and tell you and your girl on the couch watching TV while he fucking the home. You got to do whatever you can to help him get You got to hold the camera for the nigga. If you that's know what, what that nigga want. And mm-hmm. especially if you got an ugly ass bro and you know it's going to be hard for him. Nigga, fucking do some community service, nigga. Like, serious, like, help Dang. this nigga get it. But if your man, if your bro is in a, a, a relationship, man, to say mm-hmm. he's he's putting you in uncomfortable because maybe you you like his girl. You know what I mean? It could be weird. I remember living with some friends in my 20s and um, I was talking to this girl and she had a friend because, you know, like it's always fun when you mess with a girl and she got a home yeah. and she got a girl from your homeboy, right? It's dope. So I'm like, hey, man, you ain't got nobody. You ain't got no friends from my homeboy. She's like, oh, let me see a picture. I had this nigga send me pic- like a couple pictures and I was like, no, you need another one. So I had this nigga send me the best picture he could take. So I sent it to her. She's like, oh, okay, he's not bad. Man, call this home girl. So we, we going out. They're supposed to meet us at the house. So they come over. Girl walks in, see my homeboy. No lie. She said, I'm not doing this. I don't, oh, and man. she left. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I yeah. know what. I'm surprised she ain't lightly jogged to the whip. <laughs> that's she fucked said, up. She said, I'm not doing this. It's like waving somebody off when they come to see you. You know what no, I mean? No, that's like when you're in the club and a chick's dancing, shaking that ass, and you and you walk up behind her, try to rub, rub on that ass, you know, jump on that ass. I never experienced this, what you're about to say, though. I, I, I've never always, experienced I've the I've always side. accepted. I, me yeah. too. But when she turns around, she gives you that look to see if she's going to keep dancing. And every man knows this. She gives that look back, and yeah. then she approves, she's smiling, she twerking yeah, the fuck yeah, out of yeah. her. I'm sure it's happened to me at least. Or once. if she turns around yeah. and then steps forward two steps, yeah. nigga, you ain't, you, know, you ain't as cute as you thought you were. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And every hoe got a type, so man... That's Take true. rejection and move yeah, yeah. on it ain't, and know it it's not like you. you. Right. But if you you know if it's you. This yeah. nigga it, who you were talking about, it was him. It, that had nothing to do with a type. Nah. Some some types just ain't no type for anybody. You yes. know what I mean? So and don't cock block, bro code. Would you agree? Oh, hell no, you can't, bro. You can't don't cock block. block. It contradicts the previous rule. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't. Niggas like cock you're block, supposed though, to you're supposed do. to play Robin to his Batman on in the game. Like but, but, Dude, niggas cock block. You going the over there and you want to play Joker, bitch. Nigga, yeah. you're the villain. You dude, know what I'm saying? Dudes do this regularly. Let me tell you why. It's not because he has any problem with dude fucking. Nine times out of ten, he wanted to fuck. He wanted to fuck. And she chose the other but dude. But that's dead wrong. And I've been in this situation. It was young in the game, middle school. Eighth actually, grade. actually, this happened to you a lot later on in life at <laughs> uh, who? Who? Oh, I don't remember. I, we were at the club one time and Oh. Yes, I do remember. And I don't know if I call that situation a cock block because... No, no, that... that I don't think it was a cock block because... That, what, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was grand theft. So we, grand fucking theft, I agree. So we go to the club, right? And it's the, it's it's towards the end of the club. We we young, dumb, and full of cum, ready to do our thing. I slide on this chick. Got the number. I mean, it's Jeezy here. Stop playing. Dog, why does fucking Dez walk... Yeah. You got to tell you the whole story. Dude, though. I walked away. I we, walked away. We walked away. Preface is 20s. Hold on. Hold in on. the 20s. We in the 20s. But let me just say this by saying, we literally said, Dez was like, man, I'm ready to go. Yeah. He, he was like, I'm ready to go. This place is whack. Right? So so we like, but set, we done say, cleaned yeah, up. Let me say we done got two, three numbers. No, don't fucking make no but I'm not taking, I'm not taking care for you. So let me say this. Y'all like, I have no game. All right? I have no, I have no approach game. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm yeah, not good. You seem to have it that night. No, I did. No, I did. We looked back and we was like, Dad's got this stance where he spread his legs because he's like six three, six four. So he spreads his legs so he can get down to a whole ear. And we looked back and was like, Why is Dad's in assuming a position? Like we know this is the position when he's lying. And I, he saw me it's talking true. to the whole. He saw me pull my phone out and get her number. This nigga saw me. And the worst part that hurts to this day, and, and there's no, I never lived, lived down. 
she chose me first, but then it really don't matter who she chose first through it. It doesn't it's, matter who she chose last. It's who finishes last. Exactly. So, so I always tell people, I, I, I hoop ball is life. I always say, hey, how you start is how you finish. And <laughs> that nigga finished harder than me. I came strong, so, but I didn't finish you know, strong. You, you, you finger rolled it. I finger rolled it. You had a regular finger roll. I jelly fanned it. I, I, I Andre Iguodala it and D came with the LeBron block and won the championship. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I recall the pussy. I recall you saying the pussy was great, too. Oh, man, it was so long ago, man. Oh, man, it man. was. It was a long time ago, but... Missed, um, them t- missed them twenties. Horrible nigga, though. I just yeah. want to say, and that is not broke. He caught block technically by that, No, that wasn't caught block at all. Yeah, it wasn't. It was a steal. It was yeah, a steal. Yeah. So is stealing anywhere? In it there? didn't. It didn't own the broke. Now, if, let me say something. If you, if, it ain't yours yet. Technically, he he was free to get it. I if, couldn't do anything. So, I feel like if it can get stolen, it wasn't. It yours. wasn't mine. He so, was right. So this was a loose ball. Anybody and anyone could have got exactly. it. Exactly. He can't. touched it first, but I poked it out. Yeah, I bet you did. Man. <laughs> I have I haven't lost ever since, but okay. Yeah. And we never really, we never did it again. But yeah, he, he got that one where he will he will take that one to his grave. So yeah. oh man, this is a good one. If you fall out with a bro for good, you cut this nigga out of your life. You never tell other people his secrets or any sensible uh, yeah. information about him. No gossiping, no bitch assness. If you don't fuck with that nigga anymore, cool. Yeah, keep but the name you out your mouth. Keep his name out your mouth and you don't bring him down. Because your shit was your shit and his shit is his. Facts. You know I think every man knows but that. Hoes be doing that shit. Do you have to be Women taught? Are the worst do you that. have to be taught that? Is that something men just know from living? I think you have to be taught. I think somewhere in the line, your man, your your, your father, your uncle, someone, a friend, like, hey, no, someone that's not has how to you do it. Yeah, this is a learned behavior. And yeah. the only reason I say it's a learned behavior, women do it all the time, like literally all the time. They fall out with someone and be like, man, that bitch wasn't shit. Let me tell you, girl. Yeah. And then. <laughs> There is all the tea, mm-hmm. all the iced tea, all the lemonade with iced tea. You know, it's just all too the much. Yeah, you know I mean, what I'm saying? So every drink. Yeah. It's, it, and so this is a learned behavior. And I say it's learned because I remember even learning it at a ripe old age of maybe like seven. Man, my father was like, listen, men don't talk about everything. We don't share everything. His words were, Men keep secrets. Yeah. Now, I'll never forget this lesson because you never tell a 10-year-old some shit like this. <laughs> How do you tell a 10-year-old men keep secrets? It's, he encouraged a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And at the time, we didn't know that we he had a secret it. son and, and he was low-key, you know, trying to set us up and prepare us for what was to come. But I think that's a lesson that he taught us. And that kind of speaks to this bro code. Like, you keep your shit in house. You don't talk. You know what I'm saying? And men teach that to their their sons. I mean, anyone. And there's a general respect, man. And I think that's something that may not have to be taught. Yeah. Like, I mean, you should just respect people in general, right? Yeah. Treat people how you want to be treated. That, yeah. I mean, golden rule shit. You know what I'm saying? Last but not least, compartmentalize information between bros. Don't assume that if I tell you something, gent, dad's no, so you can go tell that nigga. I think when they're your bro, you got to keep shit tight and don't assume that everything. Now, I think every relationship is different. Yeah. You and I, all three of us are different. I know if I tell that some nigga, you could tell Jen because you know I tell that nigga too and vice versa. Well, your relationship a little different. Too. Exactly. But <laughs> it, it, it definitely is. But I think you know the situations where you don't have it like that, Correct. the friendships where you don't, it's and true. you don't get to talk. I couldn't tell Dez's business to another homie. That nigga ain't in the, our circle. Correct. You know what I'm saying? So. Correct compartmentalize and don't talk like hoes fellas like women always say niggas is hoes too or talk like hoes and i get why and we normally do debrief about pussy and shit like that but not about anything that's like our feelings something that actually is valuable i agree and real man i don't think we talk about shit like this in this way because that shit is bitch shit man that shit is bitch shit straight up it's so funny though I, when you said like, "Hey, you know, our dynamic is a certain way." There's been so many times where I might I might have told Des a story, and before I even hang up, as soon as he's hanging up, nigga, he's calling you because yeah. he wants to beat you. Because he want he wants to tell me the right version. He wants to yeah, tell me his yeah. version. Just the right no, version. But sometimes you you'll take away from your version. You, you want to make things look different. You want to make yourself look different in another life. No, nah, nigga, I need that raw version. Somebody who can be objective. You know I can't I mean? really trust him like that. You need to not trust him like that. No, nah, you know who your circle is, man. Like at the end of the day, man. Women come and go, and we hope you choose a good woman that lasts forever. And if you do, your bro will know it. And guess right. what? She'll get that bro up. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And that's that shit trickles down and transfers to a good relationship. But if you're not in that relationship, your bros know that too, don't they? 
interesting. You know, you know if I'm with a hoe that's for real, for real, and I'm feeling or not, because I'm telling you what. Right. So trust your bros, and remember, they're going to be there no matter what, and give them that respect and that attention, man. Now, you say something really important, and I, and I want to stress that. You know, if you, because your real homies, your real bros, like, when you get in that relationship with the right person for you, even if, if, even if they wouldn't have chosen that chick, they know you well enough to know that chick's the one for you. And if she is, to, to Jeezy's point, she going to get that love because the niggas going to say, man, this, this chick is good for I love dog. her. I love the way y'all vibe. I love it. And it, it makes you feel so she becomes into that bro pack. You right. know what I'm saying? Where you trust her with information. Right. And now I can tell her some shit that I know, you know, can go to dad's because it's all in the circle. And you know, right. to me, those are the relationships that last the longest. They when are. your girl can get into the bro circle almost. Because she's a homie. Because she's a homie. But but that's a woman who's focused on ensuring that there's a friendship within her relationship. That's a fact. And that's when men feel comfortable. Men feel comfortable. And when they do, they will bring that woman. You will be brought in yeah. without even asking. Exactly. You will actually go to all the events the boys were just going to with just the boys. Yeah. You'll be, you'll hear the stories sometimes, that, sometimes, yeah, sometimes yeah. you'll hear the stories that you probably wouldn't been privy to prior. You will get some of the information that you're behind the curtain, man. And you no, you'll never be fully behind the curtain. You'll never yeah. be a man I mean, with testicles and, and, and a dick unless you went to Taiwan and changed that shit. Wow. But love you long time. <laughs> but in the end of the day, man, that is, should be the focus, man. Yeah, I, I I agree. You know, again, your bros, man, they've been there and they're going to help keep shit tight. So you can't take them for granted. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, again, I think it's important to remember this topic again was about bro code within your relationship. For sure. Your bro is going to respect your relationship. He's mm-hmm. going to fucking help it. Yeah. You're going to realize if you a bro is real for real, your bro, you're going to see that. Dang, this nigga helped you get right when you was fucking up. He helped you get right when you was thinking about right. doing this or doing that. So I, I, I really can't stress it enough. And, and to Jesus point too, your real <laughs> bros, your real homies, they're going to keep it real with you. So that means they're going to tell you stuff that's going to piss you off sometimes. Mm-hmm. They're going to tell you some shit you don't want to hear. You can be like, all right, dog, I'll let you later, right? Yeah. Like, they're never going to disrespect you. But keep in mind, being straight and honest and forthcoming with the people you care about is never about disrespect. It's about keeping it real with them. So if you, got, if you got motherfuckers in your life that, 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 that encourage you to make bad decisions all the time, even when you have that something good, bro, bro. who don't keep it real with you, they tell you what the fuck you want to hear, Mm-mm. they're not your friends. Mm-mm. Keep yeah. it real. I almost never agree with these niggas. <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying and it's love man. and it's just about respecting your opinion man Facts. you know what I'm saying so again the bro code we broke it down for you ladies Breezy. I think y'all got great insights into what's going on and and maybe this will help your relationships too fellas and maybe this might make some women not sleep so well tonight Well, you know and, and listen honestly I don't give a fuck Ho, if the, the reality is Women have a code of their own, and oh, I'm willing to bet that much of it mirrors what we discussed today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while we're, while they're hurt and bothered, like, man, I know his homie is always going to cover. Guess what? Your homegirl is going to cover for you, too. I don't trust what that hoe tell me. You know what I'm saying? So I, it I've goes never once ways. had a bitch come and tell me about something some other bitch is doing. Or, or what <laughs> or what her girl is doing yeah. to me. Like, yeah. hey, man, you know. No. You know what I'm saying? She's going to hold yeah. true to the girl yeah. code. And, you know what I'm saying, maybe we need to get do that as a topic and cover that yeah, and get yeah, a couple yeah. chicks in there and that really discuss that, that girl card and, and, and really go in on that. So we'll, we'll, we'll look for that, man. But Yeah, yeah. so I just want to wrap it up by saying, hey, we appreciate y'all, man. We have gotten to a wonderful 30K plus listens. Uh, thank you guys for spreading the word, telling a friend, all of those things. So to give you a quick breakdown on the socials, um, we're at Facebook. We're also on Instagram at Brunch with Boys. We're also finally on Twitter at Boys with a Z. Un- brunch underscore Boys with a Z. Get it right, nigga. My-